Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Let's go. Oh my gosh. Good morning. It is Thursday, our scouting day. We just finished breakfast and had coffee. Um, it's about 6.45 right now. Sun's coming up, so we're gonna get the truck warmed up and get ready to roll out at seven. It's gonna take about an hour to get to our unit, but the sun will be completely up by then. We'll find a good spot to sit down and start glassing some animals. Our goal today is to mark at least, at least three good groups of antelope and hopefully some mule deer so that way tomorrow we have them pinned down we know they're where they'll be and we'll go get them hopefully be successful all right here we go with the sketchiest part of the day again as you can see it's 20 degrees outside we've let the glow plugs warm up for a little bit let's see if we can get this truck started oh my god come on There we go. Yes. Gosh, this truck does not like the cold. So we're out here in our unit. We finally made it. We, uh, it took us about, I don't know, an hour and 20 minutes to get from the cabin to our unit by coming this direction. So far, we've seen a bunch of decent antelope. There was a ton of antelope with good bucks right back behind this ridge, but they were all in private. Right now, we just glassed up about seven mule deer right there at the top of that ridge they're all does as of right now we think there may be a buck with him but he's probably either hanging back or he's on the other side of the ridge so we're gonna probably jump back in the truck keep driving and see if we can find another group of animal antelope to glass up all right we just stopped at another spot as soon as we got out of the truck jared found a whole group of antelope over here with a really nice buck and now we're hiking up to another side we're gonna get up on top of this knob and do some glass and i think jared sees some more Oh yeah, Jared, I see him. No, right there on top of the knob. Yeah, he's good. So that makes us really excited. We've got that good group of antelope marked. And honestly, they're so far off the road, I doubt anybody else will see them. So this will definitely be one of the spots that we come back to tomorrow. When we got to the top of that hill, we ended up finding about 20 mule deer down in the ravine. They saw us right away and they took off running, but they were at 550 yards when we first saw them. We just found a huge chunk of BLM land back here behind the state land and it borders private. So we're gonna try to make a hike down one ravine up to the top of the next and I think we'll be able to see some animals hopefully on the other side. Huh? Nice young buck. Where did he go? He's like down in the bushes. He'll pop up here in a second. He's big. Oh, there yeah, he is. Right there, there. Yeah. yeah. Check him out, dude. Right there. Watch when he comes out. He's a big, oh, I see him. bigger buck. Like, big white strip out there with the road at the end of it going up. Look down from that road. And then maybe to the right a little bit. They're all along the edge of it too. They are everywhere. 
Yeah, this is the the flat that I think they're talking about. That they said like there's an antelope everywhere. You just have to try and stalk him. So we're filling up the truck now. Hopefully it'll get us through the next two days of hunting. Uh, the guys are grabbing some lunch inside the gas station. It's pretty much one of the only restaurants in this town. So fill up the trucks and head back to the unit. So we got a little Wyoming traffic jam going on here. All the sheep in the entire town have blocked the road and they ain't moving. We were almost to the start of Tommy's zone and our deer hunting region. We just saw 10 shooter mule deer. Like one mule deer was like a five by six or a six by six, absolute giant, giant mule deer. And then there was just at least six other really nice bucks with him and then a couple young bucks. But got some crazy, crazy good photos and footage of him with the giant 200 to 600 millimeter lens. You're getting some footage of them now, you're good. I'm zoom past you. He's a stud on the left. Yeah, that's nice. I'd shoot every one of them. There's four, four shooter bucks there. There's two right there. There's three right here. This other one's going back across. Ooh, there he goes, big one. You watching these right here? Yeah. We just came across a whole herd of mule deer and white-tailed deer. There was some decent, I would call them very average bucks in the group. Um, go ahead and check it out now. from him. Really? Yeah, go look at the other one over Oh my god, he's such a stud. Where's the other one? Keep going. That's that bush. Yeah, right there. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, he's huge. Those are white tail, dude. There's some mule deer does in there. Oh my God. These, these ones are better. Yeah, the ones in your hand? Yeah. Yeah, they're stronger. Oh. There's more laying down over there. They're all they're all on the fence line. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's one, two, three. Those look like mule deer. They're laying right. down. Hey, you see it? Where at? Straight up. Straight up. From oh, God. <laughs> oh, oh, God. What stud deer. Well, that was a very, very stressful day. The first part of the morning was awesome. The roads were awesome. We saw antelope, we saw mule deer, everything was great. We went to town, got to some diesel, and when we came back, we tried to take different roads to come around our unit, and it pretty much ruined the day. We were mud bogging, it was going crazy. It was just an absolute disaster. Somehow we didn't get stuck, and we ended up making it through, but the truck is absolutely covered in mud. It's a little scary, because I thought I broke the truck. It was wobbling like crazy going down the highway. I think it was just shaking off mud. So we're hoping it'll last for the rest of the trip, but that was a crappy day. All right, it's opening morning. We just had our breakfast and coffee. Everybody's loading up in the truck. We're hoping the truck will start this morning and we're gonna head to our unit. 
It's about an hour and 20 minute drive to our unit and then we'll see what we can make happen. Here we go, let's see if the truck will start. There we go. I tried a different method this morning. I turned the key off and on six times, which I think warmed up the glow plugs better than the past days where I just turned it on once, thinking that the glow plugs would warm up the whole time. So doing that six times, the truck started right up. That's awesome. We're heading out to our antelope and mule deer hunting unit. It's opening day. We're, we should be there right around 7, 7.10. Um, legal shooting light is like 7 o'clock, so we're just going to be a little late. Hopefully we can still slip into a spot where we saw a lot of antelope yesterday. We saw a couple hundred antelope out in this field. The only problem is it's going to be right where all the other hunters are going to be. So it's going to be interesting. We're going to see if we can close the distance and get a couple shots off. Snag me a jackrabbit. All right, so we've made it to our unit. It's seven o'clock right now. Um, legal shooting light was 10 minutes ago. I'm sure some shots have already rang off over in the land of the antelope where we're heading to. Um, would have liked to get there on time, but it's just too sketchy on these ice roads, driving in the dark. So now that we're pretty confident on it, we'll leave a little bit earlier next time. Um, we got about maybe 10, 15 minutes before we get over to the spot that we're wanting to get to. And we'll basically jump out and see what we can do. We showed up way too late. There's like trucks everywhere we wanted to go. We found one spot where there's not a truck, so marked here. We're gonna try and make a stock out into this field and see what we can make happen. Yeah. Recording? Yeah. Alright, you ready? Right, you wanna stand all the way up? Yeah, just walk with the cow. You can stand up with it. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Walk slow. Let's go, baby. We couldn't get the video. The GoPro keeps dying because of the cold. But right here, the moo cow got it done, baby. We we freaking stalked up to these antelope. Got within like maybe 150 yards of them. I sent one round. I missed. I was shooting freehand. Sent a second round. Drilled him. Dropped a nice buck out here on BLM. So crazy. First day, opening morning. All right, guys, here we are, opening morning. Wyoming, central Wyoming. The moo cow has got it done this morning. We stalked over probably close to a thousand yards so far. Stalked all the way out here to where BLM hits the private line. We're right here in the corner of BLM and we found a whole group of animals. It was like seven does and a small buck and a really nice buck. So we broke out the moo cow. We started to make a stock on them. They didn't even care at all. They, they saw the cow, they looked at it. They went back to doing their thing. They ended up moving closer to us. I couldn't, I, all the sagebrush is too tall. I couldn't get down and get a stable shot. So we thought about shooting off of Jared's back. That would have been crazy. He was still breathing hard. And that bullet, that, that muzzle would have been right by his head. So we didn't do that. And then finally, I didn't want to lose the opportunity. So I took a freehand shot, missed, I shot over top of him. Immediately racked another shell, waited for him to stop running, took one more shot, got him, nailed him perfectly. And he ran maybe, I don't know, he, he ran maybe 50 yards and he piled up. So he's right over here. He's probably about 100, 115 yards, I think. We'll, we'll measure it out, but this moo cow is crazy. So guys, we're out here on BLM property. This is public land. This is the first time ever in Wyoming. I spent the entire year planning for this trip. I was searching Onyx maps. I was searching uh, YouTube. I watched every antelope hunting video there was, all in preparation for this. And I would have to say the biggest key to our success this morning was Onyx maps. If we didn't know where this private land line was in reference to the BLM land, we would have never known to come out here. So my goal was to skirt this private land line all the way down and try to make like a barrier back here because there's like 40 trucks out here on all this BLM land. They call this like the seven mile flat. There's like thousands of antelope. Our goal was to get out here to that private land line knowing that all those hunters were gonna push those antelope out to us. It worked perfectly. Jared and I stalked 
near a thousand yards out here, set up, found these antelope, and it was it was perfect. It worked exactly how I planned all year long. So I've got to say thank you so much to Jared. He was on the gun. He was supposed to shoot first, and he ended up turning around. Right, and behind us on the ridge, where we came in at. Yeah, it's probably our group of does. They're circling around. So yeah, dad's walking up here now. Once again, I want to say thanks to my best friend, Jared. He, he was going to take the shot and he ended up letting me take the shot and it worked out perfect. So dad's walking up now. We're going to walk up there and check out this antelope. This freaking GoPro would have been epic and the battery keeps dying because it's so dang cold out here. We did it. <laughs> we moved from here all the way up here with the moo cow and it worked perfectly. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Oh, let's go. Oh my gosh. Holy cow. What a beautiful animal. Oh, thank you, goodness. Oh my gosh, dude. Beautiful. That's nice. That's Holy cow. All right, so we're gonna punch my antelope tag. So here we are, finally got my first Wyoming antelope. DIY, public land. We've been studying Onyx maps and watching YouTube for the past year getting ready for this trip. We were fortunate enough to draw tags this year. And first day, opened in morning, we got it done. It was a little crazy. We were chasing packs of antelope everywhere. And uh, we finally came down here to the corner of public land where it meets private land. And the game plan was to set up in this corner, knowing that all the other hunters on the public land would be pushing the antelope towards the private land. And it worked out perfect. We broke out the Montana decoys uh, moo cow. And I tell you what, that thing worked perfect. We, we were able to close some distance, probably about like 15 yards, but the antelope actually looked at the moo, moo cow and they started coming towards us. They were closing the distance. So I made the first shot. It was freehand. I was shaking from running, so I missed the first shot. But I did a follow-up shot, was able to hit this antelope and he ran maybe 50 yards and collapsed. Um, really, really happy to be out here with my dad, my best friend, my brother-in-law, and one of our family friends that's been in my life my entire, my entire life. So pretty cool. Really glad I was able to harvest the antelope on the first day. So now I can help the other guys be successful as well. We're gonna be get this thing field dressed. And we're gonna get taken out of here. I already punched my tag earlier when I first got the antelope. So we'll get them field dressed, taken out to the truck, and then we'll get back to hunting for the other guys. So I'm about to go recover my antelope, but dad and Jared are stalking a group right now. I'm waiting to listen for a shot. I think they're moving in close. Trey, if you can push them this way, through the top of the hill, right where Alan and Tommy were, there's about four big bucks. Okay, yeah, hold your position. I'll come straight down and I'll push them to you. All right, I'm gonna make a move and try to push the antelope down closer to dad and Jared. There's a whole group of antelope out here. Jared's about to take a shot on one. Jared just shot. I don't think he got him. My first Wyoming antelope. That's so cool. Really cool. Public land DIY. Drag him back to today's lunch. So, we're doing our best to get the antelope to the top of the hill. But the problem is our legs are cramping really, really bad. So it's making it that much harder. This is a prime example. Oh, I couldn't do this without the guys in the group that I'm with. 
my legs are cramping so bad I can barely drag the antelope so they came down to help me they're pulling it up for a little ways and then I'll jump back in finally made it back to the truck just so happens the truck is at the top of the mountain that was crazy from now on if we shoot one far out there we're just gonna pack it out we're not gonna try and drag it out like that that was not a good idea so we just jumped out in a spot where there's ravines on both sides of the road and Jared and I went to one side we found three does that we put a stock on got within a hundred yards Tommy found a whole pack of mule deer with a nice buck but they were standing on private and it would have taken way too long to wait them out to see if they'd make it to public. So we're heading back to the trucks and then we'll uh, head to the next spot. We just found a group of mule deer buck. A group of mule deer, but there's a buck in it. So we're making a stock now up the hill. You know what? We should take over this one while well, we have the wind in our face and we haven't spooked anything right here. Well, we put a good stock on those deer. We ended up, we would have had a shot. We were really close, but uh, no bucks showed themselves. There was just a small spike, but we're, we're not looking for spikes out here. So we're heading back to the truck now, see if we can do a little bit more before the sun goes down. Dad's whipping us up some dinner, some peanut butter jelly with some Doritos. Not on the side, in the peanut butter jelly. That's the key. Good morning. It is day two of hunting. It is Saturday. We're heading back out to that same area where we saw all those antelope yesterday. We're gonna give it our best shot to put the rest of these guys on some antelope. We'll see what we can make happen. It's, the temperatures are rising, so that's not that bad. Um, we're up to 25 degrees now. <clears throat> My lungs are tore up from hiking up that hill, so it's going to be an interesting day. Here we are, day two, hunting in central Wyoming. I've got the camera today. Since I'm tagged out, I'm just going to focus on being a cameraman. Try to get some of these other guys on some antelope and see if we can get the shot on film. Beautiful morning. Not that many people out today. Either they're, they're sore and hurting like we were this morning and they just didn't come or they all tagged out yesterday. So it's gonna be interesting. There's definitely not as much pressure. No pressure. I'm gonna stick with dad today. He's uh, he still got his antelope and builder tag. He's trying to punch. So right now, Jared and Alan and Tommy went out to these ridges behind us. We're not really seeing a whole lot of antelope. All these hunters in here yesterday kind of pushed them out, but dad and I are gonna go up Head down to the south and then cut back in and see if we can find something. So dad and I are leaving this spot. We actually were sitting there and I heard something that sounded like a kind of like a cough. Looked up and there was a doe antelope. Came running over the hill, ran right past us. At some point she was probably at like 175. Uh, dad might have had a shot at like 200, but we're not we're not looking to get a doe yet. Maybe on one of the last days. So we're moving spots now. I'm gonna see if we can find some more antelope. Jared and I are walking to a new spot. We came up to the north end of our unit and it's a lot more geared for deer. We got lots of trees, lots of mountains. So we're gonna get back here and see if we can find some deer.
So here's what's happening. Jared and I just found a stud mule deer buck on state land and he's at 1160 yards from us. So we're making, making our way all the way out to him and seeing how close we can get, seeing if I can get a shot off on him. He's all the way on the other side of that ridge, about another 400, 500 yards on the other side of that ridge. We're trying to close the distance on him. We've made it about three or 400 yards already. We're climbing the ridge that's across from him, seeing how far it is. See if I can make the shot. Just got eyes on the buck. He's at 700 yards. We're climbing another ridge and it should put me about 400 yards from him. As big as he is, I think I'm gonna take the shot. It's gonna be crazy. Here's what just happened. We just stalked 1180 miles. And I, I thought the buck was gonna be on the other side of this bush. I got up here, he was laying right here, five yards from me. And I freaking jumped up and he started running and I tried to stop him and I just couldn't stop him and I didn't want to take a shot while he was running. But that was absolutely insane. He was huge, huge buck. I'm second guessing myself on whether I should have just shot. He was right here, oh my God. The truck is as far as you can see in the horizon over there. Man, what a crazy stock, but God dang it. I probably should have just shot him. So originally the buck was right there in that little down saddle. So I thought that's where he would be. So I stalked up behind this tree and then he was bedded down right here to the left of the tree, not where I expected him to be. Yeah, got to five yards and he jumped up and took off running. I didn't get a shot. I should have shot, but I didn't. Oh man. Jared stalked all the way back there with me and he held back while I made it to the top of the last ridge. And that buck came running down about 50 yards from him, broadside, but the buck just never stopped. And now forever I'll be haunted by whether I should have shot while he was running. I mean, he, when he stood up at five yards, all I could see was his neck up. So I didn't have a shot there, but as soon as he started getting away from me, I probably should have just taken a shot. That thing was huge. Man, that was crazy. I mean, what a cool experience, but God, that's gonna haunt me forever. You can still see the mountain in the background. The top of that mountain is where we were. Oh my gosh. What do you got to say? He's just disappointed in me. Oh man. It's not slippery. Oh, we made it back to the truck. Definitely regretting not shooting at that buck. That, that was nuts. We stalked so far and it was absolutely perfect. We stayed up with wind and everything, but I just popped over the ridge and he was right at my feet. It just didn't work, so until next time. Saturday night dinner is a what special one. Leanne made Hello. barbecue ribs and oh, potatoes and cornbread. <laughs> it's gonna be a good meal after a long day. All right, good morning. It is Sunday, day three of hunting. You're probably wondering why we're still at the cabin even though it's daylight. We, uh, with, with the temperatures dropping and all the snow melting on the mountain, it's been very sketchy getting up here to uh, our lodge. So we ended up making the decision to leave the lodge. We're gonna stay down in town at Casper and it'll be a shorter drive from Casper to where we're hunting. 
the lodge is awesome and it would have been 20 minutes from our unit but the road north out of the lodge is an absolute disaster so we can't even go that way so the only way to get to our unit is an hour and a half drive the opposite direction so we're gonna move everything to Casper and we're gonna continue our hunt we, we have like three or four more days left to hunt so we're gonna see if we can get these guys on the antelope or some mule deer cabin you served your purpose you gave me a place to sleep you kept me warm I'm gonna miss you so long up to the top and see if, if there's any bucks in it. And if there is, I think Tommy's gonna take a shot. So we got up to the top of the hill and we looked over, we started crawling over, getting in position. And it was just like a bunch of does and there might have been a small buck in there but if it was he was so small we could barely notice it they ended up spooking out and running off so we're heading back to the truck and then we'll go to another spot here's what's going down right now tommy and jared and i are stalking in on a group of antelope there's a nice buck in the group we saw him from like 1200 yards away we're stalking all the way to him. We're making one of our final uh, climbs right now, and we should be at about 400 yards from him. And then we'll reevaluate and see how we can maneuver on him, or we may just wait and see if they stand up. It's gonna be crazy. They're over that hill. within range and I think Tommy will get a shot. It's still 250, so you're good. Okay, he's turning broadside. Just take your time. You got all the time in the world. Reload it, reload it. Get ready. There you go. All right, hold on. Hold on. 
Just aim right at him this time. Hold on. He's the one in the middle. Okay, hold on. See what they're going to do. Here they come. Here they come. Hold on. You'll put the crosshairs right on him. Hold on. He's the one in the back, the farthest in the back, but all the does are in the way. Hold on. Okay. Either one on the left is, oh, yeah, he's broadside. Oh, I can't find him. He's in the back. He's in the back. I know. I can't find him. Um, he's, uh, the front one. yeah, the front one put the crosshairs right on him. Oh, over top again. You got it. One more. Oh, right, hold on. So maybe put the crosshairs right on the vitals. Wait for it. Wait for him. Wait for him. Oh, no. You're good. You're good. You're good. Let's see where they go. Hold on. He got you again right here. Okay, hold on. He's the guy shot. Okay, reload. Up and turn. up putting that stock on that group of antelope we got up to 250 yards from him. Tommy took a shot at one of the bucks it just went a little bit over top of him the group ended up running closer to us and the scope was zoomed in so much Tommy was struggling to find it and I was trying to zoom the scope out as fast as I could for him and uh, so Tommy ended up taking another shot so they came running into about 150 and Tommy got a, got off a second shot. It still went just over top of him. I think it's because we were on top of that mountain, and they were like straight down below us. So I think the bullet went over, like went high. So then they ran a little bit farther. Tommy took another shot. It was still a little bit high, and then uh, they ended up getting away. It was a crazy experience, but that was really fun. We stalked over a mile to get in on those antelope. And it was like, it played out perfectly. Tell me, what do you got to say to Summer? Oh, just a little high, honey. <laughs> There's Dad and Alan standing up on top of the mountain. They watched pretty much the whole thing. Pretty crazy. All right, tell me, tell me what happened. Finally got up there. They got close enough. Started to get excited. <laughs> trying, to, trying to account for the drop in elevation. And I think the first one just zoomed right over his head. And I gave it a rego again. <laughs> I gave it a rego again. The second one I thought was money, but I think I was just aiming too high and not and not in the right spot because that one was definitely there. And then the third one I just gave it a just send it down range and pray for hit the stick and it didn't. So we'll get them tomorrow. Yeah, good times. And Tommy, always remember you miss. 100% of the shots you take. That's my I take three. That's my model. It wasn't four? No. I thought it was four. Was it four? Yeah. Was it four? It was cold black. <laughs> I don't want to tell you, I didn't even know there was a fourth one. Alright, here we are. Jared and I are walking out in a new area that we haven't been yet. This is back in uh, our antelope unit. I'm tagged out, but I'm going with Jared. See if we can get it done. We've, we found over a hundred antelope out there. They're about a mile and a half out there. So we're just gonna slowly start working that way. See what we can do.
keep eyes on it. We're over, we're about two miles deep in this BLM and we just heard some gunshots. We turned around, we saw some antelope up on the hill. We're like, oh, oh maybe the guys are shooting at the antelope. Dad just starts texting. He shot a giant mule deer buck, he said. So we're running back now to go meet up with him. Oh my God. Tommy and Alan made it to the deer. Tell me it has five holes in it. It's, it's a freaking stud. It's dad's personal best first mule deer, biggest deer. I think they said he shot it from like 400 yards. We'll find out when we get there. We're still like 20 minutes away. So we've been hiking for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and we're one ridge away. The top of that mountain right there on the other side is where dad and his big mule deer is. They sent a picture. It's an absolute stud. We can't wait to get there. Man, I'm so proud of him. We're coming over the ridge right now. Look at this there they are. Oh my gosh, that's a beast. Dad, let me see him pick him up. Oh my gosh, he's huge! Wow, what a stud, Dad! Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's pretty good. coming to see me? You saw them? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, they're on the ridge over that way. Huh. But they were just Yeah, yep. Alright, here we are. We quartered up the entire deer. Got all the meat in this bag. Dad's got the horns and the cape. Jared's carrying the uh, oh antlers. My bad. Oh, we've, we've been chasing antelope. And then Jared's carrying some guns. Oh, three quarters of a mile hike out. This shouldn't be too bad. So we've made it halfway to the road from where we cleaned that deer. It's a struggle. That's a lot of meat. I would guess there's about 100 pounds of meat in there. And then dad's carrying the rack and the uh, skin, which is probably 30 pounds by itself. Crazy. So maybe like another hour we'll be out to the road. Finally made it to the road. Now I've got about a half mile walk to the truck, but I'd much rather walk on the road than what we just went through. So we came to town and uh, the game wardens have a check station posted up here at the gas station. So we're checking in dad's mule deer buck with them. They asked if they could take a CWD sample from the buck. We said, absolutely. So they're gonna do that now. And then uh, it's pretty cool. We were, we were actually really proud to pull up here because all the other days that we've been stopping by, we're like, nope, nothing yet. So now we were like, heck yeah, we got something. Check it out.
time. You <laughs> 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 So we're driving through our unit and we just found some deer. We're creeping up on them now. Right there, right there, to the right, to the right, to the right. Going up the slope, going up the slope. Right there. He's, he's the second from the right, or from the left. Okay, he's in the middle of them. He's standing broadside. He's standing broadside. Miss. I don't know. So we crept up on those deer, and it, at first all we saw was three does. But then we noticed some more deer over to our left, and uh, one of them was actually like a little four-point buck. So Jared got down, took a shot at 210 yards. Looks like it might have gone just underneath him, and then all the deer took off running over the ridge, so we didn't get another shot. It was close, but a good way to kick off this morning. Hopefully we get a couple more opportunities. I don't know, you zoomed on my scope. <laughs> Jared's blaming me because last night when I cleaned his gun, uh, I turned his scope power down just a little bit um, so that way you can find things better instead of being zoomed in all the way but he's blaming me it's all good final day of hunting Jared already had an opportunity at a mule deer buck this morning just shot under it it was pretty far so we're heading out now into the spot where I killed the antelope the very first day We've got good fog this morning. Like it sucks our visibility, but it's gonna help us creep in on the antelope. So, Jared and I are heading one way. Dad and Alan and Tommy are heading the other way. We'll see what we can do. Final day, let's get it done. You got him, Jared, you got him. She's going down. She's going down, Jared. Yeah! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. You got him! Is it is it a doe or a buck? Dude, you smacked it. <laughs> hey, give me some, dude. Dude! <laughs> you got it done. Oh my god, me either. Jared luckily saw him. We just came down to an area where we saw some antelope on the day we were scouting. And we jumped out of the truck. Look, there's the truck right there. So we went 100 yards from the truck. We come over the first hill, and there's three antelope right over here at like 200 yards. Jared drops down, puts the smack down on a doe. Jared's doe ran maybe 50 yards and then piled up. Did it? He got his first Wyoming antelope. <laughs> wow! Oh, it's crazy. It took eight days. Oh, that's so cool. How you feel, bro? Feeling good. Last day, man. Now you know what that is? Dinner. Loins. <laughs> loins, baby. Get some loins on them. All right, so we walked out. We went on that ridge over there. We got to that ridge. Walked out about maybe 60 yards. We turned and right past the hill. These ones walked out and stopped. This one was quartering right to me. Shot right in the shoulder. Got him down, man. Got him down. 
That's two antelope, one mule deer. Let's see if we can get Larry to antelope. Let's see if we can find two more mule deer. He's going down! He's going down! You got him! You got him! You got him, Dad! He did something weird. He fell down! Hold on. We just came up on the group of antelope that Jared got his earlier. And Alan and Tommy, I think, were Alan was shooting at some. And Dad got off of two shots at some. And I think Dad might have hit one. It looked like one was falling down. So we're we're heading down there now to see if we can figure it out if he got one or not. Very cool. Here's all of dad's deer processed <laughs> up. And then there's my antelope processed up. And then this cooler down here is full of two more antelope that we're gonna take home and get processed once we get home since we're leaving in the morning. We don't have time to have him process it like this. But that is a lot of meat. 